Today we are out in East London, in the Docklands, because it is time to do more secrets of the Docklands Light Railway. Now, of course, some of the keen and amongst you will know that there have been two videos made like this already, hosted by Jeff Marshall, made in 2014 and 2019 respectively. Like in some of my older videos, I am just here to update the series and point out some of the other stuff not mentioned. So, this is not an official sequel, but simply a fan-made continuation. Both videos will be linked in the description. So behind me is South Quay, one of the original stations that opened with the DLR in 1987. Except it isn't, because actually the station behind me has only existed since 2009. The original station was located just down the road from the modern day one. Now, the reason why the station was moved is because due to high ridership on this part of the network, trains had to go from two to three sets, which resulted in many station platforms having to be lengthened. However, South Quay was in a position where the track was very curvy on either side and the platforms couldn't be lengthened. So, they had to just move the station down the road to a slightly straighter area in order to allow for three set operation. Sadly, nothing remains of the original station today. You can't mention South Quay without mentioning the horrible bombing that took place here in 1996 the badly damaged nearby South Key Plaza, which is behind me, and killed two people. A plaque marks this event at the modern day station. Our next stop, West India Quay, where there is of course a very important travel tip. In the original 2014 Secrets of the DLR, they of course pointed out that it is much quicker to change from the DLR to the Jubilee Line at Heron Keys instead of Canary Wharf. Well, here at West India Quay, it's the same situation. If you want to change from here, the DLR, to the Elizabeth Line behind me, just simply change here at West India Quay. It is far quicker. Awesome. So just north of West India Quay station, behind me, is North Quay Junction, which is the hub of most of the DLR service. As you can see, there's the train going behind me, heading towards Stratford. This has existed since 1987, but it was significantly modified in the early 90s to create the extension out of Beckton. Due to this, many different bypass routes were constructed, and the original track connection between the Stratford and City branches was removed. However, if you travel on a train heading north from West India Quay towards Stratford, you can still see the area where the track used to be nearly 30 years ago. And speaking of Stratford, our next stop is Stratford. I'm currently standing on the DLR terminating platforms here at Stratford. Again, another part of the DLR that originally opened in 1987. Except it isn't, because actually the platforms I'm here on right now have only existed since 2007. So where are the original ones? The original terminus was a bay platform that was located on the edge of what is now the westbound Elizabeth Line platform. So as you can see, right behind me is the original terminus platform for the DLR here at Stratford and it was closed in 2007 to allow for better frequency and the modern day platforms are right there. Now our next one is another unconstructed station. In the 2019 Secrets of the DLR video they of course talked about Thames Wharf, the planned station on the Woolwich branch between Canning Town and West Silvertown. But did you know that the Beckton branch was also going to have one? If you look at maps of the DLR, made between around 1988 to 1995, you will notice that there is a station on the then under construction Beckton branch, marked as opening soon, named Canuct. Of course, that is the name of the tunnel under the Royal Docks that is currently used by the Elizabeth Line. The station was shown to be located between Royal Albert and Prince Regent, at somewhere around this site, which is now a car park. But why was it not built? Well, I'm not so sure, but I think it is because unlike the Isle of Dogs, this area, known as the Royal Docks, took a lot longer to start developing. And if you look at pictures of some of these stations in 1994, you can see that they are basically located in the middle of a derelict site, which is probably why Canuck Station never got built. But here, somewhere between Royal Albert and Prince Regent, is where quite possibly there could have been another station on the DLR. Our last stop for the day is Heron Keys, where there is something I am really surprised nobody has pointed out. Of course this station is quirky for being built inside of an office building, but 
I'm here to talk about something that happened back when this site was an abandoned strip. When the Docklands Redevelopment Plan started in the early 80s, the inclusion of a small airstrip to bring businessmen in and out was discussed. So, in 1982, a test was carried out to see whether a small aircraft could land on a former dock. In this test, a pilot landed a Bryman Airways DHC-7 on Heron Keys, which at the time was a derelict empty pier, converted into a temporary runway. The success of this resulted in the construction of London's city airport. Apparently, the spot where the plane landed is where the station is today, and this plaque marks the spot. Well, that's it for today's video, where I've showed you more interesting secrets on the Docklands Light Railway. Please like, subscribe, and as always, I'm getting the train home.